and welcome to an Eternium video it's one that's been requested by a few people um, I'm going to split this up into a sort of mini series because I think it would be quite long otherwise um, so the question has been asked quite a few times how to craft this necklace or these rings now the rings are identical so we only need to do one video showing how to craft that ring um, so in this video I'm going to cover the necklace only so I think it's going to get too long otherwise um, it's not going to cover all the jewelry crafting basics that's going to be a separate series as well um, but there's two ways that we can go about this crafting it we can either sit here and spam craft thousands and thousands of necklaces at the jeweler waiting to find lots of uh, necklaces with values that we want in order to start making that um, so we'll cover that method first and then the other way that we can do it is by using jewelry boxes which cuts out all of the crafting or most of the crafting uncommons at the jeweler stage um, jewelry boxes you can obtain those if you buy the season pass level 2 there's jewelry box which will give you a custom rare jewelry level 4 and another here and there's quite a few of them as you go through uh, so you can pick up those if you buy the season pass if you are free to play then uh, a new beginning events you get three of them for free if you complete troll 50 you'll get one troll 60 you'll get one and troll 65 you'll get a third so i tend to save them up from amb events and just stick them in my stash as until such time as i want to use them um, and the other thing with making perfect jewelry is you are going to need a decent stash of brilliant gemstones um, but uh, you'll see that as we go through um, so let's start off and we want to look at crafting this necklace um, I'll tackle the stats hopefully in a sort of logical order we'll look at power we'll take that up to the epic stage first and stop there then we'll move on to crit damage up to epic and finally crit rating and haste get those up to epic and then we'll look at the socketing that's required on those in order to get that 301 stat on the power so let's get a start with that so here is the necklace that we're looking to create uh, 301 power 121.3 crit damage 212 crit rating 200 haste um, so we're going to tackle the power stat first and we'll be um, pretending that we're at the uh, jeweler crafting and we are looking for uncommon necklaces with a power stat of 90 uh, 90 is the maximum for power uh, you need to bear in mind this is a rounded number it might be i think as low as 89.5 um, so when you're crafting these you can end up with just under 301 power going down this route um, it won't make any difference whatsoever to your overall build but it's just something to bear in mind now we're working on a power stat only and we're looking to make uh, an epic with just power so the way that we do that is we'll start off with our uncommons um, and we're going to craft hopefully you've got three of those with a power stat of 90 uh, you don't want to fuse those instead you want to socket into the, each one of those a brilliant ruby so that's going to boost slightly the overall power before you fuse it uh, and when you then fuse those three uncommons you'll end up with a single rare that will have a single power stat um, which will probably be 151 or 152 152 is definitely what you get with 
pure perfection 90s uh, things that are coming out underneath that may end up with a 151 I so say it's not going to make any major difference overall on your build um, so we've got one rare we then want to create another set of uncommons each with a 90 stat each socketed with a brilliant ruby at which point you fuse that and you get your second rare with 90 uh, with power at 151 152 thereabouts and repeat that a third time and fusing those gives your third rare with just power on it um, and then socket those with brilliant rubies and at that point you can fuse those up and you'll have an epic it's a single stat epic epics can have up to three stats but we've got a single stat on this one which is power and to go in the socket on that I'm not going to tell you at this stage um, we want to work through the other stats first um, but it's how you socket the um, epics determines the sort of top values that you end up with on or the these final values that you'll end up with over here so let's move on to another stat so let's get rid of this power and instead we can now move on to critical damage um, and at the jeweler when you're crafting necklaces or rings a max stat for critical damage is 60.0 percent um, so again we're going to look to make a single stat epic with just crit damage on it so same process we want three uncommons each with crit damage um, the rule is because we have a single stat here if we fuse that up into a um, rare then we'll get a bonus to our crit damage on the rare so since there are no gemstones that have plus crit damage on them we don't want to socket any gemstones into these uh, if we did we'd end up diluting the stats we'd end up with a rare plus whatever we add on the gemstones and we end up with less crit damage as a result of that so uh, do not socket anything into those instead just fuse them straight up into a rare with crit damage on and again we're repeating that process a second set of three uncommons each with a 60% crit damage stat fuse those up into a rare and do that a third time and fuse those into a rare and again we don't want to dilute the stats going from rare to epic because again there is a bonus at this stage for having a single stat so uh, we want to get our maximum bonus crit damage when we create an epic so we'll just fuse that up into an epic uh, that's a single stat with crit damage on it and again we will there will be something going into there uh, but we'll be covering that after we have covered crit rating and haste okay so let's get rid of crit damage and we'll work on the final stats um, now we can't go down the route of creating another epic with just crit rating and a fourth epic with just haste on it because legendaries are made by fusing three epics so we already have one epic which has got just power on it we've got a second epic with just crit damage so our third epic will have crit rating and haste on it um, I uh, said so this is more of a how to make this particular necklace video so I'm not going to go into the maths and the wires and and 
other reasons for why you should do this but we're going to do something called a 5-4 split which has been shown to be the optimal way of distributing the points through uh, this uh, final epic um, so at the jeweler you're looking for uncommons crit rating has a max stat of 90 haste also has a max stat of 90 so nice and handy um, we we'll start off with crit rating and we'll start off with three uncommon rings each with a hopefully 90 crit rating stat and into those do we have a corresponding gemstone for crit rating yes we do it is topaz so add in topaz that will give us some extra oomph to our crit rating and we can fuse that up into a rare. Uh, the second rare that we're going to work on has got crit rating and haste on it. Um, so we're going to have two crit rating rings or necklaces and one haste. Uh, we know that we want to socket the correct corresponding gemstone to the stat at this stage so our two crit ratings will have topaz and haste we can boost that with a sapphire that gives us extra haste at that stage and that will be fused up into a rare with two stats crit rating and haste and finally we'll make a haste ring so we want three uncommons with max stat haste so three of those and again socket those with haste uh, sapphires for haste and fusing those will give us a third rare pure haste on it um, so this is why it's called a 5-4 split because we've got five crit rating rings or necklaces and for haste um, and the rare to epic stage uh, I when I made this would have put a topaz in the crit rating a topaz in the crit rating plus haste and a sapphire in the haste uh, there's nothing to stop you saying oh I want to put a sapphire here what that will do is cause crit rating to go down a bit and a haste stat will go up on the by the same amount on the final piece so you're not going to lose out on any stats you can just make those a bit higher or a bit lower just with changing that from this to that um, and then fusing the three rares with their socketed gemstones will give us a crit rating and haste and again I am still not telling you at this stage what to socket in that uh, we'll cover that next so let's get rid of this crit rating and haste uh, and it is time for the final sockets and fusing so we have created three epic rings or necklaces at this stage uh, we've got power, crit damage and a crit rating and haste and if you want, if you followed this exactly and you are looking for 301 power then the final uh, sockets are a brilliant ruby needs to go into each of those items um, if you say stick in a topaz here that will drop the power down by 10 but it will boost crit rating by 10 um, so you're not losing out on stats at this stage however it's probably if you're looking for that 300 that final socketing has to be the stat that you're looking to push all the way up to 300 so uh, that 301 power was done by making a pure perfect power epic socketing brilliant rubies all the way through that a pure perfect damage crit damage 
epic with nothing socketed until we get to the epic in which case we drop in some more power and we had our perfect crit rating haste and finally more power into there pushes that all the way up to 301 which is how we get to that stage so I guess that covers the jeweler route so we need to now look at going down the jewelry box route so before we look at the actual creating um, that necklace using jewelry boxes first of all we need to consider what actually is a jewelry box doing um, what is it the equivalent of so if we were to open that jewelry box and select necklace and power then that would give us a rare power necklace or ring and it will have a stat of 152 which is the perfect value for a rare and that is the equivalent of three perfect uncommon power true 90s each socketed with a brilliant ruby um, and then fused together and you'd end up with 152 so the jewelry box is a good way of it covering all the heavy lifting that you don't need to sit there at the jeweler crafting thousands of rings or necklaces trying to get these uh, max stat values and even then they might not be max stat they could be the 89.5 plus so it does the heavy lifting gets rid of this step altogether and instantly puts you into the uh, rare phase so uh, this is the approach that I use when I'm making perfect endgame jewelry um, you can mix and match jewelry boxes and um, crafted items at the jeweler um, they can smooth out imperfections in items that you craft at the jeweler um, but I prefer just to have enough of these to go straight away so let us take a look at how to make that necklace now using jewelry boxes so here we are with our necklace again that we wish to create but this time with jewelry boxes we we'll tackle it in the same order so power first of all um, and this time we're using jewelry boxes um, so if we have a jewelry box and we select uh, power from it that will instantly give us the rare with 152 power on it uh, and then we'll want to open up another jewelry box and select power to get our second rare and a third jewelry box with power and create our third rare and then at this stage just as we did with the uh, crafting at the jeweler stage add brilliant rubies to boost the power in those even further and then we can fuse that up we get an epic pure power and if you've watched the video from the beginning then you'll know that at this stage we are adding a brilliant ruby because we're after 301 power at the end so let's get rid of that and following the same order as before we'll now work on crit damage so again jewelry box this time select crit damage when you open it and you'll get the rare with crit damage only on it uh, repeat that another two times so we've got three rares each with crit damage and we do not socket anything into these because there is no gemstone for crit damage we don't want to dilute this we want to keep this as pure crit damage so we'll fuse that up into an epic that is an epic with just crit damage on it and again because we we're aiming for 301 power we now know that we need to add a brilliant ruby to that one so if we get rid of that um, and we're now covering crit rating and haste um, now the problem with using jewelry boxes is that they will give a single stat every time 
hey, uh, single stat rare every time. And in order to make this distribution, we have had that 5-4 split on the uncommons. So in order to maintain a 5-4 split, we can only use two jewelry boxes and we will need three uncommon rings or necklaces. Uh, in order to get the optimal stat distribution. Uh, so the way that this one is done, a uh, reminder that the max crit rating stat on an uncommon at the jeweler is 90 and same with haste. Um, so we start off, we use the jewelry box, select crit rating from it. When you open that, you'll end up with the rare with crit rating then we're going to work with some crafted rings or necklaces uh, we'll have as before two crit rating and one haste and as before we'll socket the corresponding gemstone so crit ratings have a topaz and haste will have a sapphire at that point fuse that up that gives a crit rating plus a haste rare down here and finally we can go back to jewelry boxes with haste on that one and that will give us a rare with pure haste uh, at this stage socket topaz into uh, the crit rating socket topaz into crit rating and haste and socket sapphire into haste uh, there was a mystery plus sign appeared there. That's what threw me a moment ago. Um, and then at this stage, you can fuse that up into the epic, which has crit rating and haste. And because we want 301 power, then socket that with a brilliant ruby. Um, so that means we'll have the power epic socketed with a brilliant ruby the crit damage epic socketed with a brilliant ruby our crit rating plus haste epic socketed with a brilliant ruby so all three together can then be fused at the jeweler to create this uh, drop in it will have a, a socket available so you can drop in extra power if that's what you want as i've done here uh, and I think there's one step to go in order to make that exact necklace. And of course the final stage is the necklace has a power enchantment on it. So over at Ingrid the blacksmith would go to craft, enchanting, greater enchantments, necklace. Necklace can either have vigor which gives us vitality or burning rage which is power. Uh, to make the power one we'll need 200,000 gold, 10 spirits of harmony, 10 spirit of war, 10 haunting spirit, 150 silver dust and 6 marker titans. Once you've got that uh, all together it's just a case of click on craft you'll end up with the enchantment which will look something like uh, one of these there's a vitality for something else but then you just drag that over the item that you're enchanting so you'll drag your necklace enchantment over the necklace this wants to go on a chest because it's a chest one but if it was a necklace piece then it would want to go on there and it will add that enchantment to it um, so I think that wraps up this video. Next one will be for the rings. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.